If we did nothing, they would overwhelm the estuaries completely, wipe out all the shellfish, and turn what used to be a very fertile ecological region into a barren kind of place. Two thousand fourteen was a peak year for crabs. Nobody had ever seen so many crabs in the creeks and estuaries around here. It was alarming. There were mussel colonies of at least an acre in size, if not five acres. I mean, they were big, 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 and they're just gone now. For anybody trapping green crabs for the first time, it is very strange. They are small and very aggressive, so they're very destructive. The entire ecosystem has been altered, and when you have an organism that is especially aggressive and opportunistic, it has the chance to thrive. So they have thrived. That is about 300 crabs in three hours. Hungry, savage beasts. The marsh that we have here is the largest in New England. It is a landscape of curving estuaries that rise and fall with the tides. They are relentless, and they wipe out the eelgrass. If you destroy eelgrass, you destroy a very important nursery for fin fish, so you have fewer fish offshore. This is a lovely, nice, long shoot of eelgrass. And what we do is pull up a little section of root, and tomorrow we'll put it in Plum Island Sound with a gardening stake. And it's unbelievable. Even within about an hour planting period, you can see little fish and animals move into the area because it's like going from a desert to a forest. One adult green crab can eat as many as 40 half-inch clams in a day. This is 40 legal-sized clams, two and a half to three inches. Getting them to this point is what is at risk. Well, not only have they found a home living in this, the high, the upper end of the estuary, but their food is right, they're living right with their food, too. So it's a recipe for disaster, <laughs> you know, and that's why we trap them. Turn the boat out. Just hold the trap. Down. Yep. Where we fish today in the river, we were averaging 50 to 60 30 pound bags every time we hauled the traps. That's 2,000 pounds. If you do that for three months, it's a lot of crabs. So much crab. And there are a million places like that, and there are crabs in every one of the places. As the Gulf of Maine has warmed, and it's warming faster than any other body of water, the green crabs that have been here for decades okay. have Thank exploded. You. They are not trapped. The best use of green crabs is as food for humans and very high level cuisine. Roe is the central component of a dish called she crab soup. S-H-E hyphen crab, she crab. Traditional she crab soup comes from the American South where it is a cult favorite. It's basically a crab bisque and that roe gets added to add really, really deep flavor. If we can introduce New England she crab soup made from wild green crabs, isn't that beautiful? And produce a lot of the roe for the restaurant chefs. We will have potentially a hit on our hands. Uh, It'll take a lot of green crabs out of circulation. I don't want to see it. The roe that he's getting out of, I've eaten it. 
and it's exquisite. There's, there's no better way to describe it. It's good. We're going to eat our way towards the solution. We're going to try to do it. We stack them up here on pallets, and we took 80 or 90,000 pounds of crabs out of that place. How can that be? Where do they come from? Do they fall out of the sky every night? If we weren't trapping them right now, I can't even, they'd be walking the streets. They'd be coming down the driveway. Everybody is in favor of trying to do something about the green crab. The big questions aren't why do it or are you crazy? The big questions are how are you going to do it? What will it take?